politics is more of a theater distraction than reality. But again, rather than believe everything that you see, you know, think it through. Germany blocking Nord Stream 2 and, and their whole energy situation in, in, in Europe. Do you think that might be sort of a cover up for like a, a great reset type of event or something among those lines? Uh, maybe this is another massive distraction for the collapse of the financial system. In that line of speaking, too, has the political situation changed your mind and, and or thinking on, on, on anything within this topic? Has it worsened it or made it better? Or what do you think about it? Well, to quote Eleanor Roosevelt, very little happens in politics by accident or by mistake. I think, you know, most of these globalists, most of the nation states are globalists. So, you know, the, uh, the maestro, the leader of the band, uh, how can you get, you know, these mass shutdowns globally? Because they're all, you know, reading from the same songbook. Uh, the few that put up resistance, three of them died. So, you know, you've got to look at the bigger picture. I think that politics is more of a theater distraction than reality. Not that there isn't, you know, political classes and ideologies and, you know, that type of thing. Certainly there are. I don't want to belittle it, but I don't want to put it up as being as all powerful as many people think. I don't think it is as powerful. I think it's, it is a distraction to some level. Uh, and, you know, if you go back, let's just take one statement, okay? It's a, a video or it's a movie. I forget, I think Vieira was in Jonah's name. I forget his name exactly, but he did a documentary that all wars are bankers of wars, all right? So we're in a war environment right now in Russia and Ukraine, and, you know, is Iran going to come in and you know, what's going on with North Korea and all these things? And they're all valid. But if you go to that documentary, All Wars Are Bankers' Wars, you might get a different perspective, the one that I'm taking, that maybe this is another massive distraction for the collapse of the financial system. When the system you know, continues this downward trend and the contraction of the economy becomes more apparent than it already is, you know, it's very, very helpful for the banking class to say, oh, it was this political war, it was this war, it was this political problem or it was this uh, weather event or it was this and they'll use all those things to make sure that the general public is very unaware that it was the you know the banking class and the way the system is set up which is basically fraud to uh, that caused it very few people when this thing goes further downhill will ever blame the real power behind it. The, the political class is most likely to take the brunt of the hits, but they're paid well, so mm. they can take it. Oh, okay. So you, you, do you think that the, the Russian situation and then Germany blocking Nord Stream 2 and, and their whole energy situation in, in, in Europe, do you think that might be sort of a cover up for like a, a great reset type of event or something among those lines? Yeah, I think there's more behind it than mm. you see. Uh, you know, you're taught what to think or you're taught to believe rather than what to think. And, you know, any idiot knows that, you know, Germany, that all of Europe needs, you know, gas to stay alive, to, you know, get through the winter. And do you really think it's going to be cut off? Could be. I mean, I'm not trying to say I'm all seeing and all knowing. What I am letting people know is you got to think behind the scenes and look at, uh, you know, we go, go back to Shakespearean times and look at it from the eyes of the crowd of a Shakespeare play. You know, you see what's out there in front, but there's all these subtleties behind the curtain and then the curtain opens up and you see the act. So, yeah, I am saying somewhat in that context, um, you know, these global leaders, they, for the most part, get along with each other, even though on the surface, when you see, you know, the meetings of the G20 or the G7 or the whatever, and there is some hostility between them. I mean, there is political ideologies that some adhere to. But when it's all said and done, there's, as I said, very little happens by chance in politics. And this goes back to, to uh, yeah, I wrote something on Twitter yesterday and, and and i think a couple of people retweeted so it sort of went went viral for for my size of twitter following um is that i i just cannot understand 
what the plan is around energy in Europe. Like uh, Germany does not want gas. They don't want coal. They don't want nuclear. What do you want? Like, do you want your lights to stay on? Do you want heat? Yeah. What's going on? Why is this happening? And I ask the question, I sincerely ask the question, what's the plan? And to what pur- what purpose does the plan serve? Where is this going? Why is this happening? So what's your best guess for it? Well, that's one I can't answer. I'll just stab at it because you asked me. But I mean, basically, they want to reset. I know that word's often you know, overuse, but what they want is they want to go all green or whatever their, their mandate is. And this would be to basically impoverish the people. I mean, if it's deliberate and they'll train them all that uh, you only get, you know, an allotment of so many carbon credits, maybe a, a trial balloon or a test case for that in Europe. I mean, Germany as a, as a state is the most productive of the European Union. So, You know, if they can get the Germans to tighten their belts much tighter than they are now and make them an example, then probably, it's my guess, I'm not the best on geopolitics, but uh, I certainly can think. And that is that um, they would be the, uh, the beta test. And if they could do it in Germany, they could probably, you know, make it go through the rest of Europe more hmm. easily. Okay. That's a, that's a guess, but it's, you know, fair guess. It's a fair guess. It gets me thinking. There's a lot of, of, of ways to go with this and sort of my, my, <laughs> my curiosity research. I mean, you could go one other one. I mean, this popped in my head. I mean, there could be, and I say could, it's a big could, some alternative there that the Germans have that they want to unveil. Like we have this horrible hardship. Oh, my goodness, look at this. We have, uh, you know, cold fusion is actually a, a real thing, and we've got it. We're going to use... Uh, you know, palladium, and we're going to get, you know, energy out of this box with the palladium in it. I mean, you know, I'm just making this up. But what I'm trying to project is, again, very little happened by accident. So could it be a ruse to bring out something that's going to be the savior for power in Europe and it's going to be invented by the Germans? I don't know. But again, rather than believe everything that you see, you know, think it through. Mm. That's a, it's a hopeful thought. Well, I mean, let's hope it is. I mean, who? I'm, I'm not sure. hoping for a great reset in, in, in you know, my backyard no in Germany. No one wants no. it. Look, I mean, I've been on this path for a long time. And uh, the last thing I want is for it to take place. I mean, I've tried to mitigate it as best as, you know, I could. Not just me. I mean, many of my ilk that believe what I believe and know what sound money means and on and on. But, uh, you know, once you get so much pressure, it's really hard to relieve it without in this case, some kind of destruction taking place. Uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean buildings crumbling, but it means a readjustment to fair value. Things are mis- misvalued right now. Hmm. And that's abruptly changing. I mean, look at what fuel prices are and look at what food prices are. And you're starting hmm. to get a picture of you know, what is really valuable and what isn't. Yeah, and, and, and here's an awful example But these things oftentimes, I mean, at least in my short life experience, they end, they end painfully. What I mean by that is that I used to bite my nails as a kid. Awful example. I'm, I'm seeing this as a disclaimer already. But, and so one of my nails grew sort of like in, in, into my finger, and it started swelling and swelling and swelling, and I was not willing to do anything about it. I didn't want to go to the doctor. I was scared. They said that they got to, you know, my, my mom said they're probably going to cut it and, and, and let everything, you know, pop out. And then... One day I was just sort of playing with my finger and I, I started pinching it and so it, it, it popped and it was really hurtful and it was ugly and it was messy. And that's how I sort of imagined this going forward. I told you it's an awful example, but I, I think it's going to be hurtful. And, and, and actually why I bring before I, because I, I wrote it down a couple, a couple of points ago and I'm probably going to forget it, but why I brought geopolitics up is that the really interesting part for me has to do with, with Russia And their goal. And um, I saw a Money GPS video. Shout out to that channel on YouTube, by the way.